not the new debugger object that's in nightly builds of Firefox. First we have to go to about config and configure the developer tools to let us run Chrome code in Scratchpad. The debugger object is only available in Chrome code, at least so far. Now this tab is showing a little web page that lets us enter scraps of JavaScript. So I could put in 2 plus 2, and it shows us the answer is 4. And this is just an ordinary web page. If I view source, you can see it's just HTML, little CSS, and a little JavaScript. Now let's open Scratchpad, Tools, Web Developer, Scratchpad, and select a browser environment which just means that uh, the code we run in here will run with Chrome privileges. So, what's a debugger object and how can we use it? Well, first you have to have something to debug. We wouldn't want to accidentally... Okay, hello. We want to accidentally debug everything that happens in every tab or accidentally debug the scratch pad itself. After all, it's written in JavaScript too. For this demo, I just want to debug JavaScript code that's running in this web page over here. So let's get hold of that browser window. And now we just create a new debugger object debugging that window. Let's start with something really, really simple. There's a little known JavaScript language feature called the debugger statement, which looks like this. And by default, it does nothing. I just hit enter, and as you can see, nothing happened. But the debugger statement is a hook. And with our debugger object, we can make that hook do whatever we want. So let's have it uh, pop up a little alert. So we run all this code. And now we execute a debugger statement in the web page. And we get the alert. Sweet. So that's how you can start debugging with just three lines of code. Let's do something a little more substantial. When I call this function, I'll get the alert, of course, because our debugger handler is still uh, uh, installed. But suppose I want the debugger to show me the value of x. I can use the frame.eval method for that. Frame.eval simply evals some code in the scope of the function that we're debugging. So here I'm just asking for the value of x, but I could also query the DOM or anything else that JavaScript code can do. And if you'd like to know about this frame object and all its other methods, or why I'm using this dot return property here, I'll give you a link to the debugger documentation at the end of this video. So again, we run this code. Call the function one more time. And now the alert shows us the value of the argument x. So I hope this gives a sense of how the debugger object makes the JavaScript engine your plaything. You can use it to set breakpoints, view the stack, list all variables, examine object properties, and much more. The debugger object is available in Scratchpad and Nightly Builds now. The best way to understand the API is by learning more about the JavaScript language itself. For that, you should watch Jim Blandy's lightning talk. If you're watching this on YouTube, I've put a link below. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, check out my webpage here and see it. Um, or you can read the debugger object docs. They're not a tutorial. They're actually very detail-oriented. But if you dig that sort of thing, this is where to look. Or you can reach us on IRC. Jim Blandy designed the debugger uh, API and built it. I'm Jason Orendorf. I helped with that. Panos Estithos is building an awesome debugger on top of it with features like remote debugging and debugging the browser itself. And Greg Zork is using this API for something that's a radical departure from what it's designed to do. He's using it to measure XPC shell test coverage. You can reach us all just by saying our name on IRC in this channel. Thanks for watching.